Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This is Maximus Blazak. And I have a story. No, you don't, do you? I have a story. <laughs> okay. All right, so I want you at home to quickly grab a beverage of your choice and sit back and relax. It was a long time ago in a land far, far away, about 25 minutes from here. And I was about, let's say, 16 years old. And it was a warm, sunny, hot, humid day, much like the couple uh, that we had here in the last uh, few before uh, God himself opened up the skies and brought down more lightning than we've ever seen in the history of mm. this province. It was a lot. It was a lot. And so I said to myself, Self! <laughs> you actually did that? I, hey, Self! Self! Okay. You know what would make this day better and more tolerable? Let's go to the beach. And I said, okay! Let's go to the beach. Because what? it's hot, and it's humid, <laughs> and I need something to possibly cool me off. And if you live anywhere near here, you know that if you need to be cooled off, just step foot in the water for about three minutes, and you'll be more than cold. And so I said, all right, that sounds like a great idea. And so I went forth. Adam, I'm scared right now. I have no idea what you're doing. And I went to the beach. Okay. And I laid on those, those hot, hot sands, and I got a great, great tan. Something like mine? No, not quite. Okay. And actually, it was kind of annoying because I had some sand on my side, and so when I brushed it off later on, it had speckles. And anyways, this... So you look like one of those things from Twilight. This, but if I had watched Twilight, I would know what that is, but I'm not. It's basically a big fruitcake that sparkles. Yeah, that sounds pretty accurate. Okay. All right. And so it got to the point, you know, when you lay on the beach, uh huh, and it's a hot day, it gets even hotter than usual. Can I introduce the players? Yes, sure, go ahead. Okay. Oh, shit. Ha. Okay, keep going. All right. And so I said, you know, it got really hot. And I was like, all right, I need to get into the water. I need to cool off because I'm going to have hot, I'm going to have, I'm going to have heat stroke if I'm not careful. And so I went into the water and I said, you know what? No. I got up to about my chest. I said, no, this is not enough. We needed to go deeper. Kind of like Inception. That's what she said. <laughs> and so <laughs> I took a deep, hearty, Michael Bolton breath, and I dove, and I swam, like the Little Mermaid, but manlier. And I went down, down, down into the cold, cold Atlantic waters. And eventually, I came across a fish. What? And the fish said to me, I know you. I've heard of you. And I said, really? Because that's frightening. For two reasons. One, you're talking to me. And two, you've heard of me. And he said, don't be afraid. And I said, okay. And he said, you want to know how I heard of you? I said, yes, actually, it would be very kind of you if you could go ahead and let me know because you're a fish and you should not be talking. And he said, a bird that I met on my travels. Oh my God. Spoke of a young man. <laughs> I can see where this is. Not far from here. He was slightly darker than you. Oh, a little less handsome. And he had bowel problems. <laughs> but luckily, said the bird. One cold, cold night in the woods. There was a tree. I know it sounds crazy, <laughs> but there was a tree in the woods, and I was in that tree with my young, my, with my young chicks, and I had nothing to feed them for days and days. But lo, came forth a black man. That's me, and he poppeth a squat <laughs> on my tree. And out from his bottom flew golden, precious fluids and matter. And <laughs> matter. The likes of which I had never seen. And he said, I, I risked it. I went down to the ground. And I picked some up and I said, mmm. <laughs> it tastes like blueberries. 
<laughs> and so I brought it back to my young. And my young very quickly gobbled it up. It was and it was good. And so we survived that harsh, harsh cold night. And he said, he passed the message on to me. Should I ever meet another person quite like himself? And I said, how does that have anything to do with me? And the fish said, I don't know. I'm a talking fish. What the f***? <laughs> the longest segue. Light TV has ever had. And I'm Nova War! <laughs> <laughs> and this is just a normal ass, normal game oh, sent in by the fans. Oh my god. And it looks right, it looks right now, uh, like, uh, right now that, uh, both of these guys are supply blocked, and this is a base race, Mr. Black! Well, I'm so happy to have you back here, Mr. Nova War. Oh, no problem! No problem at all, it looks like XO, Genesis, and Baby V are in a good old-fashioned PvP base race down there. We have XO, Genesis laying down a Nexus, which will help him a great deal back up top. Baby V is actually picking away the remainder of XO, Genesis base. And I don't know if Exogenesis knows exactly where everything is yet, but there are two pylons in place up in the top left of this map. And so, I don't know. Who do you think's going to take this? I don't know, Mr. Steal the Show. Jeez. It's a Nova War episode. Did you have a good day today? <laughs> <laughs> I, guys, I, I had no idea. <laughs> He's gonna pull some sort of fish story out of his asshole. I have no idea. But anyways, base race. Um, Exogenesis getting pinged off one by one here. Mm -hmm. Every single Bob shit in the bed, and uh, he's gonna have to protect. What do we have here? He's gonna try to protect these two pylons with all of his might. He needs to try to sneak off like a couple of of like zealots around the corner and run all the way up there to try to get rid of this. He's not going to win this war. This war, he's going to lose right now. Well, right now you only have Exogenesis vision, but it doesn't matter because all these probes are actually going to block Oh no, all the bobs! And here comes the bobs of Baby uh, B! And Baby B is laying the smack down on all these remaining bobs! That's game. And that's going to be GG. There's going to be nothing that they can do about it. But he does still have his base. He's mining down there still. Yeah, but... And so on the odd, crazy, once-in-a-lifetime chance that Baby V does not come across that base... <laughs> Who am I kidding? This guy's dead. Yeah, no, there's there's not a chance in hell um, XO is gonna win. I mean, as soon as he finds us, like, right now, he's gonna come over here with mass units, and that's gonna be GG. Yep. If he somehow survives this... Which one? I will... Quit life, TV. Yeah. You wanna keep that train going? I'm gonna keep it going. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so sounds good. Here we go. Yeah, it looks like he's gonna come over here. He's gonna see it. This is all gonna go down very quickly, and uh, I am still no, no word of a lie in shock <laughs> on how this entire on how this entire game went because I'm pretty sure there wasn't even a single word said until about ten minutes into this game, except for your glorious story. And I must say so myself, sir. It was quite the story. Well, I mean, it was uh, it, it was things the legends are made of. So. I mean, I, I, you know, I'm trying to just help the forest out. And it was a true story. Yep. Talking yep. fish and all. It was. Talking fish and all. That that happened. Yep. Great. Awesome. Wait. What does he have? He's here? going through the pylons right now with his probes. You know this, right? <laughs> oh, no effing way. Dude. <laughs> no, are you serious? He's actually gonna win this game? I have no idea if he does. It oh my god! Is he actually gonna win this He's game? He's going for it. It's gonna be close. Oh my, it's gonna be so close. He's running up here with these stalkers. How in the hell did he allow those probes to run across the map? Oh, oh no, GG. GG. Is this gonna be a, is this gonna be, are you serious? Oh my God, he fucking won the game. Holy fucking talking fish, Batman.